Welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this Monday, April 25th. That was Mark Miller's Draw the Circle Wide, and that was the BUMC. I don't know what church that, what United Methodist Church that is, but that is their Sunshine Choir, S O N, Shine Choir, uh, singing Mark's Draw the Circle Wide. Uh, which um, goes really well with uh, the passage that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So good morning to all of you. It's good to be with you today. I hope that you uh, were able to join us, whether you were in person or online for church yesterday. Uh, it was a it was a great Sunday, but it's good to be together with you today. So good morning. Uh, let me take a minute to say good morning to you. If you want to take out your Bibles, we're going to be looking. Um, we're going to be moving on from where we were in Scripture last week, but also moving on 
from where I was in scripture, where we were in scripture yesterday as well. So John uh, chapter 21. So if you want to open up your Bibles and turn to John chapter 21, let me say good morning to all of you. Good morning, Janet and Donna. It's good to have you here this morning, holding you both in prayer. Priscilla, I get messages from you every day, but today it was right when I was waking up. So thank you for that message this morning, holding you in prayer this morning. Good morning, Susan and... Uh, Margarita. It's good to have both of you here this morning holding you in prayer. And Barbara and Blanca. Did I already say? No, I didn't. Good morning, Barbara and Blanca. It's good to have both of you here today praying for you as we start this day together. Good morning, Daniel. and Good morning, Lisa. Welcome. Praying for both of you. Good morning, Marilyn. And good morning, Esther. It's good to have both of you here holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Minda. Good morning, Michelle. I'm praying for you both this day. And Yolette and Betty, welcome. It's good to have you here. Thank you for leading us in prayer yesterday, Betty. Holding you both in prayer today. And Sheila and Vinette, welcome. Praying for you as we start this day. And good morning, Gail. I'm glad you're here too. Holding you all in prayer. Um, so we're moving on in John. And we've been talking about the, uh, first we were with the resurrection scriptures. Now we're with the post, post resurrection scriptures, um, in the gospels. So we're in John, we're going to jump to Luke next, and then we'll finish up with Matthew. But today we're in John 21. Um, and one of the, the gifts that I've been given, I don't know if I have anyone here that's been with me on the Holy Land trip, but when you're in the Holy Land, uh, we go to the Sea of Galilee. Good morning, Cyril. It's good to have you here holding you in prayer today. Um, I got to go with Cyril's mom and sister uh, to the Holy Land. And when you're there um, on the Sea of Galilee, we travel around the sea, not completely, but different parts of the sea. Uh, when you're there, we go to this beach. And this beach is where they believe uh, the scripture that we're, the scriptures we're going to focus on today and tomorrow uh, were, were the location where uh, Jesus met with his disciples and where Jesus had that, that talk tomorrow we'll talk about with, with Peter uh, on, on the beach there. Uh, it's a very powerful place for, for my own journey. Uh, so maybe someday you can all travel uh, when I go back there. Uh, you, I would love to have you come and join me there. But we are looking today at chapter 21. My name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve as the pastor of the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And it is good to gather with all of you. Good morning, Genevieve and Celia. I'm glad you're with us today. So let's jump in. I'm going to be doing 21, uh, chapter 21, 1 through 14. Chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. And this is in the Gospel of John. So we just finished up um, and Jesus has now shown himself to Thomas. And yesterday we talked about the scars. And this is what's next. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said to him, We will go with you. And they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat 
and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for there were not for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw the charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? because they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So there's a lot in this story. I've preached on this before. There's many different things that we could be pointing out. But today I want to talk about this. Um, in the past, I've talked about what, what do people do when they don't know what to do? They go back to what they did before. And that's what Peter and the disciples do. They don't know what to do, so they go back to fishing. But I want to talk about this net, this large net, and this number Um 153. What is this number, 153? Well, numbers mean a lot, especially to John. Um, and to be honest with you, we don't, we're not really privy. We don't really know exactly what that number was. Um, but most likely those who, who heard John's gospel understood what that number may have meant. Um, some scholars believe 153 were the known languages in that time. And so this net of fish represented all of the, the you know, all of the people uh, throughout uh, the universe, or throughout the earth. Um, some believe 153 was a number of fish species that they knew at the time. Um, but you know, we're just, we're just guessing at things, but this is what we do know. We know that there were, that it represents a large abundance. Okay. And not just one or one kind of fish that it was abundance of, of many fish. Right. And so this net, not only did it, did it scoop up and bring in a, an abundance of fish, but the net was not torn, which means that none of the fish were lost. None of the fish were lost. Now, if we go back to the original calling of Jesus, uh, calling Peter, James, and John, we know that he called them to be fisher of people. Right, so here they're fishing, but this full net is a representation of what Jesus will call them to do next, which is to go out and and fish for people. What is fish for people? To go out and to find people that would be so on fire for the gospel message, the good news of God's grace and mercy and love, that they would go and tell others and tell others 
and tell others. And no one would be lost. And no one would be lost. This is such a powerful message. Last week, um, I was given the honor of um, doing a funeral for, I mean, it's always hard, but this was a young man, a 27 year old young man who had had challenges in his life, had, had gone down paths that, you know, had not brought life. But in the last couple years, he had seen his life through the lens of the one sheep that Jesus went after, you know, that wasn't that one that was not gonna get lost, just like the net, right? That wasn't torn, not one fish was lost. This young man gave his life to Jesus and, he, and everything changed for him. And he was felt so called in the midst of that to tell others about what Jesus had done in his life. And he couldn't tell enough people about how this transformation, um, this acceptance that he had received from Jesus had changed everything. And I know that even though he ended up losing his life um, because of, you know, his heart or I'm not quite sure, but I know that his life will bear fruit in other ways. And so I come back to this net, this net that is so filled with different kinds of fish and different, different, um, you know, all, all scooped up together in this one place where they belong, where not one gets lost. And that's the message I want us to hold on to today. It may feel like you are that lost sheep, or it may feel like you too often get lost in the midst of the world around us. But I need you to know today that in the, the, the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are given this promise. Everything that Jesus did was to bring people back together. All of his teaching, all of his healing, even his very death was about bringing people back together so that no one was lost. And that, my friends, is good news. Let us pray. God, we come before you today acknowledging that too often we feel like our lives slip through the cracks. We feel like we are the forgotten ones. Like if we are the sheep that goes astray and no one will bother to come and find us. And yet again and again and again, the scriptures remind us that you see us, that you do not forget us or leave us abandoned or orphaned that you are working on our behalf for our good. And so Lord, this day, help us to trust that, but help us also to remember that just as we are seen, we need to be about the work of sharing that good news with others, with those in our world who feel that they have been forgotten, that they have been passed over, that no one sees them. Lead us today to be about the work of sharing your good news, not just to one or to some, but to all. We ask this in your precious name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer 
that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Not one was lost. This is good news. God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Have a very blessed day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, friends.